It's so nice to see so many of you here today. I want to welcome all of you on behalf of the Fenway Alliance. It is the 20th anniversary of this festival. I began the Opening Our Doors Festival in 2001. I thought about starting the festival when I took the job now over 21 years ago because I felt like it was just such a natural gift that the 21 cultural and academic institutions that comprise the Fenway Alliance could make to the city of Boston. They had so many wonderful cultural resources that I thought this was one thing we could really do to shine a light on all the amazing cultural activities in the Fenway, but also to form sort of a real welcome to people who may not be as familiar with the institutions. The name of the Opening Our Doors Festival was created because uh, Malcolm Rogers was a new director of the Museum of Fine Arts, one of our long-standing members, and he opened the doors of the MFA on Huntington Avenue that had been shuttered for over a decade. So he made this wonderful, I thought, symbolic and literal gesture to the public and the citizens of Boston to really open up the museum. So I used that gesture in naming the festival originally, Opening Our Doors. And we now have the opportunity, now that we're coming out of COVID-19, to gather as a community. We're grateful you're here today, and please enjoy your time at the plaza. We have the Boston Children's Chorus. Boston Children's Chorus was with us from the beginning. And that was wonderful because they brought all the families of the children who sing in the chorus to come and enjoy the day. Corner store jams, Stony Brook Shade, and Jackson Square squabbles, a mosaic of languages and mimicry. We have a new, a wonderful group called the Four Star Dance Studio, and they are from Dorchester. It's run by a wonderful young woman named Kiki Smith, and it teaches young girls hip hop, ballet, and all sorts of styles of dance. From the beginning of opening our doors, the communities of color in Boston have been incredibly generous with their time, their art, and their participation. They were some of the first people to jump on board and say they would be willing to participate, often for free, although we're trying to change that now. And they really made this festival the vibrant festival it is that has also resonance with different types of people. So one of the initial groups that was there with us from the beginning was Mickey Bones from the Hot Tamale Brass Band. And so we decided it would be great to have a children's parade around the uh, First Church of Christ Scientist reflecting pool. I just loved the idea of a totally free, totally open uh, celebration of arts and culture um, in the heart of the uh, Fenway Cultural District. And it's really the heart and soul of Boston in some ways, it's Bostonians' cultural heritage, and this is a celebration of that. The first Church of Christ Scientist was amazing. Um, they've hosted the kickoff for the festival for almost 15 years of the festival's existence, um, putting tremendous time and resources into that. And I must mention Jordan Hall, New England Conservatory. They did a wonderful day of programming for opening our doors and still continue to do that. For Opening Our Doors, one of the groups who's also been with us from the beginning is the Bao Sim Mark Tai Chi. And they perform Tai Chi moves, but in a sort of a dance performance. And to me, it's always been one of the most stunning cultural events of the day. Uh, uh, we have a great time. We appreciate also the support of Berkeley College of Music to make sure that we're able to be part of, of this event. And it's super fun because it's also something for the community. Zilli Misik was one of our original all-women's group with music from the African diaspora. They were with us from the beginning.
For opening our doors, one of the additional events that's happened throughout the years has been greater participation from our academic member student groups. Now we have the Eon Dance Troupe from Northeastern and the Madrigal Singers from Northeastern. We also have singers from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts and a whole variety of other academic participation. That's been a piece of the festival that's grown in a really positive way, I think. I would like to thank all of our supporters and funders who have made the festival what it is today. They come from the worlds of local, state, and even federal government. They are state funding entities. They are Boston corporate citizens. And they are, of course, our Fenway Alliance member institutions and all the wonderful community groups that give of their time and their talent to opening our doors. Join us at Opening Our Doors in the Fenway Cultural District, held on Indigenous Peoples Day every October. We look forward to seeing you there.